Hey gang, in this video, I'm gonna help you pass the ITF Plus exam. Hey gang, it's Ron from ITMagicKey.com and my job is to help each and every one of you guys get certified. So the ITF Plus or the IT Fundamentals is a entry level exam that has 75 questions and you got 60 minutes to finish those 75 questions. You also have to get a 650 out of 900 to pass the exam. The Comte ITF Plus exam focuses on IT essentials and knowledge. In fact, They've improved the ITF Plus so much, this is the first certification that I have my students start off with when they're in the Master IT program. So let's go ahead and get into some practice questions. If you never did this type of training with me before, what we do is, I say what the question is, give you a little bit of time to see what you think the answer is, then as a family, we come together and talk about what the answer actually is and why that is the answer. So I would strongly recommend that if you get any of these wrong, that you seriously consider taking the ITF Plus exam. Gerald is currently working at Little Security Inc. Within his current security posture, he is hyper-focused on data security. He wants to ensure data isn't captured via eavesdropping. Eavesdropping is a concern for which of the following? Integrity, confidentiality, accounting, Interception. So eavesdropping is a major concern for confidentiality. So confidentiality is a part of the CIA triad. The C stands for confidentiality. So eavesdropping literally means that you're trying to get things that are secret, things that are you are not supposed to know. You're trying to figure those things out by eavesdropping, being nosy, trying to look at different things to see exactly what's going on. So when you're looking at this, if you didn't get this right, eavesdropping would be a major concern for confidentiality. If something is confidential, it's a secret, nobody's supposed to know. Only the right people, only the people with the proper access, the people that are supposed to see that stuff, see that stuff. If you eavesdrop that stuff, that would be a major concern when we're talking about confidentiality. Ronnie has been troubleshooting a customer issue for over an hour. He believes the same issue may have been resolved by his coworker, Jimmy, last week. What should Ronnie have done before he started troubleshooting the problem? All right, gang, so when you get out there in the real world and you actually in the trenches, the first thing you wanna do is ask the user questions. They can give you a lot of information about what's going on, when things went left, when things went right, when things went wrong, okay? So if you question a user, when the last time it was working right? Was anybody else on your device? What time did you leave yesterday? How about this, how about that? So just asking pertinent questions to whatever the actual issue is. Same reason why when you go inside of the mechanic, he asks you, what kind of sound is it making? When did it start doing that? How long has it been doing that? Because the more information he has, the better he can actually assess what the problem is. And you're gonna do the same thing when you become an IT troubleshooter. Jasmine works at a tech company in Detroit. The technology company is hyper-focused on security. Jasmine has been implementing biometric security devices throughout the company. She installs a retina scanner. All employees must use the retina scanner before they gain access to their workspace. This is an example of So biometric would be part of authentication. So authentication simply put is ensuring you are who you say you are, right? So just making sure that your credentials match up to who you actually are. And through biometric, we can authenticate who you are because the biological parts of your fingerprint are unique to you. You've recently updated several drivers on your laptop. You notice the trackpad seems to have stopped working. What would remedy this issue the quickest? So 
So what most likely happened is that you updated your drivers, now there's some compatibility issues. So the easiest and the quickest way to do that is by rolling back the drivers. So rolling back is a term that just basically means that let's go back to when this thing used to work. So you'll roll back to the previous version of the drivers as opposed to using the updated version of the drivers. If you have not liked this video, the first thing I would like you to do is to go to hell. After that, I would please appreciate if you liked this video. Naomi is unable to view any websites. After James, the head IT tech runs a virus scan, malware is found. The malware has been redirecting all of Naomi's website requests. What would be the next troubleshooting step? So when you take an account T exam, there are troubleshooting steps. There is a mythology that CompTIA would like you to follow. According to that mythology, you need to establish a plan of action. You wouldn't document anything because you haven't done anything yet. You already identified the problem, she got malware. So you just wanna make sure that you establish a plan of action. I know what the problem is. Now, what steps are, am I gonna to take to actually remedy the issue? So no matter if you take an ITF Plus or one of the higher level certifications, troubleshooting and those troubleshooting steps are always going to come into play. So in real life, those troubleshooting steps are the same troubleshooting steps you can use. And that was the same troubleshooting steps that I would use if I was going through a problem. Mark is a system administrator. He is adding users to the domain before he heads out for the day. When assigning permissions, he needs to use the principle of least amount of power to do their job. This way it's going to reduce the attack service, whether it's by mistake or whether it's intentional. You don't want to give people too much power and too much access to the things that they do not need. So these questions were practice questions. These aren't the questions that's going to actually be on the exam. Now, if you're watching this video and you're like, man, I already know this stuff, already know what's going on. I don't need to take ITF fundamentals. Obviously, you feel like you don't have the fundamentals because if you did, you want to click on this damn video. So keep studying. Make sure that if any of these questions, if you didn't get it just like that, before I stop reading it, then you probably need to take a serious look into ITF Plus. Even if you did get them right, you probably still need to take a serious look into ITF Plus because it has so much more to offer than what I could have fit in this little ass video. Other than that, see you in class.